One, two, there are three wins. Uh, they're looking to make it four and qualify for the quarterfinals. We're straight into draft. Azir Renata taken away from the side of PLG with Rakan and Maokai on the side of T1. I do wonder if this center will actually be looked to ban away or if the Zaya will still make its way through the draft. I wonder how different things are going to look with T1 on the red side, too, compared to what we saw in the previous game. How is that going to switch things up? What is BLG going to have? The Rumble banned away as the final one here in the first half. So the center's still around. Yeah, Senna's still available. I do like some of the changes that have occurred here with BLG on the blue side, though, in trying to attack T1. They take away the Azir themselves, and Nico was already self-banned by T1, and those two champions were really at the crux of the resurgence of this team. Does mean they're going to give up the Zaya so sought after in the bottom lane, but um, the, the duo combo here of the Orianna Jarvan for T1 that is some nice, sweet engage. The Renata ban is still a bit of weird to me. Like, they've, they've put such a high priority on it, they really don't want Curry to get his hands on it. Yeah. I mean, they still ended up getting super pushed in, in bottom lane because of the, the, yeah. the Senna Tom Kench. But uh, I think that's what they're trying to avoid. You know, a lot of those, oh. like, Kalista is available, so you don't want the Renata plus Kalista. You don't want, the, like, the Renata plus Draven lanes. They're locking the Syndra now. They did have the Vi, and I do always like Vi into things like Orianna, because again, we, we saw this earlier in the day, once the Flash is gone, she's a very easy champion to lock down, but yeah. Jarvan into Syndra, I also think is really good. Like, these junglers uh, can do a great job of locking these things down, but Belgi trying to solidify their top side, and they have a lot of strong uh, picks in terms of the early game with Syndra and Zaya, and then giving Bin a comfort is super important for them. Yep. Yeah, exactly, because last game, something that was not draft at all, that was the top lane matchup, and Zeus really, really destroying Bin with his Gnar specialty counter pick into it. And Ooh. this time around, oh, this is an older counter yeah. into the Jax. The 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 belly bump uh, tactic yeah. for Jax for the Counter Strike. There's a lot of mobility skills across the champion roster in League of Legends, yeah. and Kragus's big old belly takes priority over pretty much all of them. As long as he's going forward when you're going, he's going to stop you and do the damage. So very, very powerful champion, especially if you know the matchups, you know the trading patterns. He can be very difficult to deal with. Blitzcrank, Caitlyn, band away here in the second half. Once again, it's BLG keeping Gumayushi off the Kate. Yeah, very, very interesting. Seeing as how the Senna was just pretty impactful this last time around, I guess BLG are like, you know what? We level one invaded, and we really messed that whole situation <laughs> up. So True. I guess they're accounting for it that way. Karia is such a good Tom Kench, though. Um, loves being that, that frontline engage, and we saw it last time. But the thing is about Senna Tom Kench, if you're on red side and you're saving him for the last two picks, one of them has to come first, and then you can't get the other until your opponent has a chance to interrupt it. When Senna and Tom Kench are popular, they're kind of best friends. They're BFFs down there in the bottom lane. They like to hang out with each other and not really anybody else. So I'm Ooh, curious if they'll what? still go for it. No, they won't. The Jinx locked in for T1. Um. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> How do you feel about this, Betty? Uh We did see a Jinx earlier in the tournament. Was It It was KT that I think played it. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was in the yesterday's match against LNG. And I think the problem with Jinx in, in the current meta, she's a really hard AD carry to play when there's so many things that can dive onto your backline. Mm -hmm. uh, she can be a challenge. But I guess with things like the Jarvan already unlocked in on the side of T1 with the Gragas disengage as well. They're confident in their ability to provide peel and protection, okay. but if this Jax Alistair ever gets on top, like that, that Jinx is dead. There's no way that she's playing this game. Yeah, there is quite a lot of peel for it, and and the lane still looks pretty good considering it's a Zaya Alistar lane that they're playing into. There's some more guaranteed targeting of the yeah, possibilities for Jinx that Jinx. Jinx is not going to have fun, man. It's Arcane all over again. We're about to get a sneak peek at season two. What do you mean, man? Right she was now. the main character of that show. How can the main character not have fun? Okay, it's, Tom Kench is a good answer. Yeah. It is also pretty good at putting some pressure onto the Oriana. I want to see if there's not a level one that's similar to last time around, if there's more attention paid to this mid lane, because both these mid laners, very, very possible that you can burn summoner spells super early on and try and force ganks with these junglers.
All right, I love it, man. Active, powerful early junglers. We got the counter pick in the top lane, the old school style with the Gragas into the Jax. Ori versus Cinder. This is probably the most evergreen mid lane matchup in the history of League of Legends esports. I feel like this is one of those ones everybody's seen so many times. But the Jinx, and specifically the ability of the Tom Kench to keep it protected, is probably the biggest thing I'm going to be looking at. Yeah, I, I actually love watching Ori Syndra too because there's so much how you can swing it in the early stages of dodging those cues and and positioning just a little bit more aggressively up front too. But of course, that all teeters on do you know where enemy jungle is? So see about those raptor wards, about those deep uh, early safety nets. I wonder if we're going to get any level one Activity. I'm gonna say no game. on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna hazard a guess. Are you kidding? You think they're gonna back down after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it uh, certainly skewed the early game of this uh, this first round here in this best of three. BLG really, really wants to avoid that situation. Bring us to a game three. Keep their chances alive at avoiding the competition tomorrow and getting the early ticket to the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think they do definitely at least need to get some early info on owner. The Jarvan could start a snowball himself. Definitely could throw a wrench into things here. All right, a reminder to everybody out there, connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive experimentation emote. You can do that right now. Get yourself connected, get your emote, start spamming it on people whenever they do something wacky in lane. How do I get the Braum one? <laughs> that seems to be the most popular. We are the wrong people to ask that yeah. question to, Kobe, but I respect your confidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad you trust the two of us with that question. As Zay is just walking it off, he wants to get away from Ben, who gets that last little hit. So, hey, a little extra HP from Grasp. Love it. Okay. The value here. Carrier also going to take a nice oh, he didn't little put the ward down. I thought that his goal there was to get the ward on the red to see where this Vi was starting. T1 donating some, uh, some early health pools here. Yeah. They're not off the members of T1 that are going to miss them the most with Gragas <laughs> and A Sustain and uh, Karia tankiness. But nonetheless, it is going to be BLG again going to the same red buff that they went to last game. Yep. <laughs> this time around, though, they're on blue side, so yes. it's there. But the squad is there. Yeah, the you squad know, is there. BLG's like, I'm watching you, T1, just yeah. in case. We know that this is something you might do, because we did it ourselves. But admittedly, uh, Elk and On realize that in the 2v2, they're not getting early push. Tom Kench Jinx, the range yeah. advantage. Tom is a really... Um, Alistair's not the best level one anyway. In Tom fact, he makes sucks. It even Let's worse. just go ahead yeah, and say yeah. it. You can say <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Tom Kench is a really great bully, so Elk and On getting late to lane uh, is not the end of the world. The level 2 should be coming through in a minute from uh, these bot laners. But yeah, I wanted to go back and talk about this uh, mid matchup a little bit more because uh, the idea behind Syndra into Orianna is that you have a range advantage, right? The, the Q means that you can often out trade against the Ori in lane. Um, the thing about Ori though is that early laning phase, you can already see she's starting to get this push off. Yeah. Uh, and when it comes to early skirmishes, Syndra is very terrifying because of her ability to set up for the gank, right? The QE, you can already get it at level 2, with a Vi coming in as well. Easily able to force a flash out from someone like an Orianna, and a Jarvan in this matchup won't be able to match that same trading power in the mid lane, uh, 2 versus 2. So this is a lane, again, that BLG can really find advantages in if they can be active in uh, the mid lane. And, and the reason I, wa I love watching it so much is because it, you can ego on them from the other side of it. We've even had Orianas getting oh, yeah. the solo kills on the Syndras. That's true. Especially if you have unpredictable movement, like walking towards it and dodging some of these cues and, and move up on them. So definitely one uh, that's very tiltable, as we said. But full clears for both junglers mean it's a calm early game. No extra influence here. It's kind of one of those things that we talked about uh, in game number one, Vettius, where we were like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to watch top lane, and everything was bottom. We're like, oh, man, look at these junglers. It's Jarvan and Vi. They can both do so much. And they're like, full clear. Let's go ahead and just get those economies rolling. Yeah. Ben doing a good job, though. Gets his grasp off, even as Zayas goes for the belly bop. Winning the mana war here currently as they both eat their biscuits. So as a reminder, oh, hang on a second. Might have to hold off on that as Jun navigates his way around Ooh, the vision. I like, I like this. We talked about the gank setup early on. Faker has no idea. Jun coming around. There's the stun. Scatter the weak. Faker tries to flash, but your gals got him for first blood. Counterattack from owner, but doesn't look like there's a whole lot to get here. Nah, the, the Jarvan's probably not strong enough for this. Owner loses his own flash. That was a little silly. 
Yeah, they're going to be able to rush down the wave still here, too, with Faker teleporting back. Yagao is so good. That was beautiful. Able to set him up. He kind of lures Faker in. Faker goes for the command attack, and the guy's able to get him, throws the W, hits the stun, lines it up for Shun so that Shun can then have his flash for Faker's flash and secure that kill. Really well done. Yagao, probably one of the least hyped up members because he usually, to your point earlier, Vedius, you know, is playing a lot of Rome uh, style champs and setting up uh, teammates, but him getting first blood, so nice having Syndra get the early advantage. It's just also a lane that you can snowball. We already talked about it earlier, right? A lane that you can be active in early on. The fact that Shun choosing to sacrifice the crab because he saw an opportunity to make that play on the Faker, navigating around that vision, just very well played. BLG being active in the early game is the best version of BLG in my opinion. And the play is very straightforward. Low mana on the side of Faker as well. That auto attack from Yagao flying yeah. as he flashes too is actually the, what cements the kill as uh, Jeune is able to flash after and provide that damage. Been getting kind of low, but I don't think he's too worried right now. Keeping my eyes on the minimap as well as to the presence of the jungler's owner pathing away as he moves towards his wolf camp. Bin? No. <laughs> no. He's that, just saying don't. That that oh, he have. is! Oh, it does! Oh. Zeus went back in thinking he might find an outplay, and Bin just beats him on the head with a <laughs> stick. Uh oh, no flash finger. Baker doesn't get hit by the scat of the week, but it doesn't even matter. The unleashed power should be enough. Faker's just buying some time. Beautiful from BLG in game two. Now, this is BLG. Bin, I thought he was just saying, don't you dare come for these minions. I guess he was. <laughs> but then <laughs> yeah. Zeus still dared for it. Body slam just inside and really good uh, from Bin. Activation time there. Pops his counter strike, gets the kill. Simultaneously getting the repeat gank onto mid too, punishing the no flash here. That's the, the snowball you're talking about. They're so vulnerable, these, these mages, when they don't have it. And it's going to be a knock-on effect. Dominoes here will start to fall. Shun picks up the dragon as well. And you look at Ona and you're like, where can you do anything, right? Maybe you can look for a kill in mid, maybe, but Yagao still has the flash. And if Vi is there, you lose that two versus two. Top lane doesn't really have an, a, enough damage or options to be able to find a play in. Chinx, Tom Kench, is this really a lane that you can enable in the early game? T1 feels very stifled and Ona's kind of responsibility is to mitigate BLG's early options, but... That hasn't happened. BLG have found great plays in mid and a big confidence play for Bin. After getting solo killed in game one, he now finds a solo kill for himself on one of his most comfortable champions. All right, let's see where our junglers end up getting involved once they hit level six. You can see those EXP bars on the side of the screen creeping ever closer to that point. Both of those ultimates incredibly effective at setting up some plays as Bin wants to go in on Zeus, who knocks him back into the cask. The Jack's still so strong, man. Hang on. Such an iconic pick Here for Bin, and he's not afraid to use it. Zeus gets killed again. Bin is just tearing him apart. Yeah, I was thinking Zeus just used everything yep. in the first engage, and then he just waits around and stands there and watches them, watches the minions. Bin doing such a good job. He always gets <laughs> his counter strike off, gets his auto attack off as as the body slam has been coming in. And this is the repeat gank. You're asking where's the level six of the jungler is gonna go? There, I believe there's a few more seconds still as, as we get back to live left on Faker's Flash, maybe. Um, yeah, a few more seconds, but uh, looking back at this kill, very clean, very easy for Bin. And yeah. We talked about a confidence play. You can see the confidence shining through for him now. Two kills top, two kills mid. The top side of the map dominating for PLG, a 2k gold lead already eight minutes in. And the pings are coming through for Harold. And what can T1 do about it? The truth is nothing. Yeah, there's kind of this big bad Jax up there in the top lane that is just not allowing anything to go down. 64 to 47 in the farm. It was the Gragas picked after seeing the Jax locked in. This was the answer that T1 said they wanted to go with, and Bin just seems <laughs> to know the matchup better. Mm, angry Bin, he's going to do everything. Get a couple of solo kills, go start up that Rift Herald for you. Meanwhile, on making his roam mid through two to get priority. That means bottom lane's left open, T1. Small window and a nice bit of communication here from BLG. I think. Elk, Elk knows he's in danger. He's going to go oh, he's face, face checking. Check face check into the brush. Whoa. The feathers fly. Okay. Owner disengages. He's got okay. his team coming. Damn. I, I wasn't expecting. I thought he'd drop a ward. I, I, didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think he'd use his face to check it, but there we are. Uh, Elk ends up being alive. So good news for BLG fans. They're still in the lead. 
And uh, they hold control over the objectives. First Herald, first Dragon. Everything looking up for BLG. And if they wanted to, they could drop that Herald top lane. They don't necessarily need to unlock mid right now. Why not just accelerate bin? We talked about how difficult it's going to be for Gumiushi on this Jinx to play these late game fights. If uh, you're this low mobility AD carry that doesn't have those innate dashes, yeah. it's only going to get harder if Jax gets as fed as he's currently getting. On the other side, maybe just uh, let Bin uh, stay in his arena and <laughs> Also <some> true. <laughs> See about the roam time, time towards uh, towards that bottom lane though that we're talking about. With yeah. Scuttlecrab coming up, with Minion Wave pushing in. Tom Kench though, carry is level six. It's just such a good denial pick. T1 trying to play some stall game, but BLG's pace that they've set is very quick for this game with all the extra kills that they've been fed super early on. They certainly will have the ability to snowball this. Yeah, two kills plus a Drake. Or four kills plus a Drake for a 2K lead. Excuse me, just 10 minutes into the game. Total gold on the left side of your screen. You can see BLG, BLG, BLG at numbers one, two, and three. Not a very good sign here for T1 as the Herald is summoned up in the mid lane. That's going to give even more money to Yagao. So far, it is just the uh, BOG show. You know, coming into this second game, we were talking about how it feels like T1 have got a 2-0 this series. BOG looked out of sorts in game one, but they're refining their form. Of course, still a lot of this game left to go. T1 do have pretty decent scaling, especially yep. with this Jinx back pocket. A single good fight with Gumiushi picking up a number of kills could be all they need. You look at the farm as well. 114 CS, he has a 30 lead. Massive. On has been roaming a little bit to assist with the top side plays, leaving Elk kind of vulnerable to ganks, meaning that he has to play a little bit more defensively. So I wouldn't count T1 out just yet. Obviously the other game going heavily in favor of PLG, but uh, we'll see what T1 can do to turn the game around. Yeah, it's a good point, because On actually came into this tournament with the, one of the highest roaming time supports in the game. Oftentimes it is, it is Elk having to uh, make his own money and he's been quite good at still dealing. Plenty of damage, even on a lower budget, though. I'm really going to be looking for that first big fight where we have, you know, four or five players from each side in there, because that's really where Jinx has the opportunity to find those pop-offs that you're talking about, Vettius. We need to see resets turn into stats that make up for the gold difference that BLG has earned for themselves so far in the first 12 minutes of the game. Until then, the Gumayushi farm train needs to keep chugging along the tracks as T1 is going to start up this Drake. We'll see if they can get it before BLG can interfere. Bin and Zayus just scrapping up here in the top side, as now we are going to see a TP coming in, but it's from Yagao, who just picked up the Leandries. Owner's going to lose the opportunity for his combo, and the Dragon's going over to T1. But what about the fight? On trying to get away. Guma wants to get excited. Beautiful engage on the Yagao. T1 may lose their jungler, but they're going to get three, and a Drake back for it. It only takes a single fight, and Guma Yushi finds himself two kills. BLG, why wouldn't you feel confident walking into that fight? The problem is you're a little late. Yagao TP's in over the wall. It means that BLG are a little disconnected in their engage. When Jun goes in, T1 can all immediately collapse onto the jungler of BLG, find that initial pick, turn it into a 4v3, and then chase down the remaining BLG members. I want to point out the position of the DPS. Look at T1, Faker and Guma. When Shun goes in, to your point, they're immediately onto him. And even though Guma's getting bounced around, Faker's able to do so much damage that Owner's able to get that kill, and then they run them forward. This front-to-back play from T1 was clean. And already that goal gap is starting to shrink. And crucially, that bot lane that we talked about earlier, two kills now for the AD carry of T1. I said I wanted that first fight with four or five people from each side to be meaningful. And there it was, T1 finding their opportunity. But the problem is still the top lane for them. If you're looking at what's going on up there, Bin could be a serious issue. And if you're BLG, that's something you know you can play around as the game goes forward. Oh, it's going to be caught by Shockwave. He could not live through it, and Faker's on the board. BLG just got Karius Flash, but T1 got Ons life for that one. He no longer had his Flash from the previous play, and T1 they're retaking control. Still behind in gold, but they're making play after play. But we've all seen it where the wind gets taken out of your sails, yeah. right? PLG were moving cleanly around the map. They had a dominant top side, they had a dominant mid, and then off of a single 
kind of lackluster dragon, they immediately concede another pick. And you can see now that, like, they've kind of lost that control. It's not over yet. Oh, nice catch, BLG. More money on Yagao. MasterCard Lane Economy snapshot shows Guma might be the one with all the cash on t one side, but Yagao's even further ahead for BLG. And I love this from BLG. Don't slow down. Don't kind of let that control shift in favor of T1. Remember what you were doing. Jun and Yagao is still a powerful duo, and they punish Carrier for the flash that they found earlier. They hold on to the gold lead for now. The Herald is spawning in a few seconds. And I imagine this will be the next objective that both these teams look to fight for. And you can see the lane assignments here, trying to send Jax to go answer Orya on the bottom side for uh, BLG as that objective does come up. We saw this one in its entirety. Something to note, though, Faker did flash offensively for it. it and those offensive flashes can sometimes oh, be blind. tricky. <laughs> he just yeah, control ward there. Oh, but back at live, we have a TP coming in. It looks like the second Herald could be a point of contention here. T1's already got five bodies in the area. Bin has TP, he could join up for this if BLG want to challenge it. Chompers are great to block off that little pathway from the river into the blue side jungle. So it looks like BLG are just gonna take it. They'll trade it away for Bin grabbing the tier one turret there in the bottom lane. 15 and a half minutes into the game, the plates are down. So Bin can do a lot of damage to this thing very quickly. Mid lane tier one turret, taking a little bit of damage from T1. Low enough now that the Herald should be able to break it. Scatter the weak onto two. Carrier having to get away. Pops the thick Ooh. skin to survive this unleashed power that likely would have killed him otherwise. I see a lot of pings, uh, blue pings here up towards Faker. So they're sending a uh, contingent of BLG members a lot to of go dudes. for him and to teleport. Okay, TP's in there. That's Bin. That's the one they got to watch out for. Owner tries to stop him. Zayus is ready to join the fight. He TP's in now as well. Both top laners going to have synced up unleashed teleport timers here for the next time that's available. And that was BLG being like, you know what? Remember that offensively blown Faker flash in mid lane. Let's try and pick him off. But yep. that's a tale as old as time. People trying to go for Faker. T1, he just pulls back. The rest of the team is there. And now we got a reset for Dragon. Only 35 seconds means you better get your control ward now. No TPs available for T1 mean that this should be a window for your guy. He's actually going to stay for another wave or not. He's a bit indecisive. Um, but it's easy for him to join the fight. Good vision setup from T1 around that neutral. It always makes me suspicious when the observers <laughs> zoom in on an AD carry. Yeah. Like, What's mm. about to happen? What did he miss? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, nice sidestep there from Elk getting away from the Zaps. But right now it's just this fight over the mid wave, right? Yeah. T1 are first to it, they'll push through. You can see Zaius has made his way down. And uh, Bin has actually chosen to stay top, so they can't fight this now on. Oh, if Owner had that timing slightly different, you can interrupt him when he's in the air from the blast cone, but and, no worries. And I like these calls from BLG because they want to play to where they are winning, the side lanes. Bin had an advantage and Yagawan had an advantage, but their AD carry, they are, they are outgunned. Well, can he oh, do enough? Does the nice. wave clear? Yeah. Um, but they're outgunned, so they didn't want to take the five on five versus Guma Yushi, who had a, a BF sword to the long sword previously. Now we just had a recall for Elk, and Elk is able to go even up the inventory, but it's at the cost in, though, of your tempo. To uh, the tier two. The yeah. top tower still lives as well. Gumiyushi's excited, but all right, they're going to back away from it. They Thanks don't want to get collapsed on. They know that Bin is moving around. He's no longer top. He's no longer pressuring the Tier 1. All right, no fight. Kyria takes his place next to Gumiyushi but once again. This is a timing for BLG to actually start pressuring that Tier 1 in mid. But with the range on Gumiyushi, he's going to have enough wave clear faker. Nice, the shockwave going to catch on, force out the ulti there from the Alistar. That's all they're going to get, though. Trade of ulti, shockwave for the unbreakable will. Look at top, though. You see once again Shun hovering around Bin, looking for a potential play, maybe a dive. But no, it looks like with the wave clip from Zeus, flash. Oh, owner just flashing in, looking for the damage here onto Elk. Nearly finds him. Super Mega down the rocket. Oh. going to get it. But the flag will be planted on the corpse of the enemy AD carry. BLG trying to get away now as they will not finish off owner. Meanwhile, Bin and Shun not going to get anything topside here versus Zeus. Beautiful stuff there. Karia is there to save owner as he goes in and kills Elk. The Jarvan pick into the Zaya, so clutch there. And that's going to be the tower on it at, on top of it. This is this is supreme control Even from game. T1. I'm surprised that Elk held on to his ultimate for so long. 
Look how much damage he takes before he throws it out. He does have Flash himself. He could just flash away here to safety. Gets hit by the uh, Zap. Now he ults. At this point, you're just guaranteed to die. And then Carrier with the Flash devour means that the Jarvan lives. There's no way to get that kill because he has the shield. And uh, frankly, a bit of disrespect coming out from Elk. I feel like he had so many tools to live there, um, but he didn't want to burn them, and he ends up burning them all anyway. Yeah. Flat early Flash, the Jarvan Cataclysm, and just try and take that worse cooldown trade, but at least keep your life. Yeah, I mean, Ona forced him into a, a very difficult situation, uh -huh. right? Which he was, burned it anyway. Yeah, it's one of those situations where I'm going to flash, but now you have to flash. We think you're not yeah. going to have it for the next fight. Um, and that the idea is good there. Ona, that's all he's trying to do, get those summoner spells out. He wasn't ex planning on getting the life, but he'll take it. Now a T1 of basically equalized the kills. You talked about how it's an even game, Flowers, and T1... It definitely feels like the momentum has swung in their favor as BLG is only really getting control over the side lanes. And Gumayushi is getting Infinity Edge completed. So the Jinx is going to be more of a problem than ever. I feel like if you want to kill him in one of these fights, the only way to do it is if Karia stands too close to the Jinx and you get a two-man knockup from the Alistar, two-man stun from the Counter-Strike. Some way that you can kill him before the Kench can devour him because Gumayushi is a problem. And with T1 continually starting out these fights by chunking down on, I mean, last time they even got his ultimate and half health him, but now he's he's behind them with a big flank. He's looking for the flank. Beautiful two-man stun. Gumiyushi gets hit by it. On's coming around from the side. Guma's got to be careful, but Shun flashes back over the wall off to the left, keeping himself alive as Elk is trapped in the Cataclysm here yet again. The feathers fly. Ona tries to stay alive. A dunk from the Super Mega Death Rocket. A double kill of a Gumiyushi. He's excited, and he just can't fight it. T1 are turning this game on its head and suplexing BLG right back into their base. A disconnected fight is punished so cleanly from T1. Faker, he ended up being the target of Shun's ultimate because he knew that the Devour from Carrier was going to protect the AD carry. He thought that he could catch Faker off guard, but T1 responding kind. BLG don't actually follow up, so keep your eyes. Good stun here from Yagao. Shun turns his attention to Faker, but there's no one there with him. It's T1 that collapses first, then on locks down Carrier. Meanwhile, Kumayushi is completely safe on the back line, while it's Elk that gets assassinated by the ultimate from Kumayushi. Guma Jinx stays safe the whole time, turns around the double. Beautiful stuff from them. I mean, it's so difficult because there's a Tom Kench right next to the Jinx, and then Faker uh, has the crown of the Shattered Queen, so then he ults over there, and, and Shun's forced to flash out. As you say, with no health, they kind of lost the, the fight right at the beginning. You want to talk about no health? Two fights in a row now. Owner has walked away with 100 HP remaining on his Jarvan, <laughs> playing around his limits superbly on this engager. The one thing, or the two things, that they did uh, get in that fight, though, are both of Guma's summoner spells. And Guma yeah. had been holding his summoner spells very closely, uh, really relying on Karia. Now that those are both down, maybe they can do something about this Jinx. All you have to worry about now is the Tom Kench ultimate and the rest of the peel from T1. Well, man, if I'm looking at BLG win conditions right now, I'm looking at the man on my screen, Yagal, 4-1-0 and zero on this Syndra. We've been seeing him hit Scatter the Weeks left, right, and center this game. I feel like if BLG want to stop the momentum swing that T1's been earning for themselves, Yagal's the man who's got to do it. And I think that they have to commit to the split push. Bin has Hole Breaker built on the jacks. That's where they got their early leads. Him getting back-to-back -back solo kills. Bin has got to do Bin things. He has got to take over. He has got to create pressure and kind of force his own win con on the game. Problem is, T1 have an easy answer to that, and it's called Baron. You start that objective and you say, listen, do you want to take this gamble against Chink Soriana, we're going to melt this objective. If you don't TP in, then we're going to secure it. They get the TP, and then they can leave or they can even choose to take the fight if they feel like they're in a strong enough position. So I feel like that they actually have answers to mitigate this split push, and this is where I start to get concerned for BLG. Right now, they're taking what objectives on the map they can, but they still haven't been able to break open this mid-tier one, which would give them so much more control over the enemy jungle. Yeah, well, there you go, that top lane tier one gone. Finally, the gold lead was back in BLG's favor just for a second, but not really any longer than that. It's so even here in this game. T1 being on soul point now. The next Drake should be highly contested, I feel like, just because the power of that soul can be so overwhelming. Of course, Cloud Drake is one of the ones that becomes more subjective depending on the team comp, depending on exactly which champions you have available. For someone like Tom Kench, it can be super strong because yeah. you become just 
an F1 car once you devour somebody. I, I'm the speed. Yeah, like, you're just crazy fast. But we'll see exactly what they want to fight over here next as Bin is trying to keep that split push dream alive. Meanwhile, the rest of BLG just keeping some control, some vision here in the top side river. They do not want to allow that Baron to go over, specifically because of what you were talking about earlier, Kobe. Oh, I just want to see the Formula One catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Garia certainly uh, would be quite the driver, you have to think. But it's it's kind of hard, I guess. You know, Ben, even with the hole breaker, Gragas just kind of holds the wave in front of tower. Zayus is why you pick the neutralizing pick of the Gragas, allowing the, the rest of T1 here to wait out and buy time for Guma's double summoner spells to come back up. He already has the Ghost, only a little bit left on his Flash, and T1 can try and pull off that team fight again. And when you're talking about the Grog as being a neutralizer, just stopping the Jax by surviving, he's got the two powerful active items that do that, the Everfrost, the Zonias. These are great at buying time to be able to stop Jax from doing what he wants to do. On level nine on the Alistar, lowest level in the game right now. We've been talking about how he's been getting chunked out, even having to blow his ult before these fights start. As now they go in after owner, but nicely buffered. Gumayushi survives the unleashed power thanks to Karia. The counter explode you button. Uh, <laughs> this is a large part of why they picked the Tom Kench into the Vi and into the... Uh, oh! Oh, but they go back in. Now they're going to look for Faker, who has to try to get away. Headbutt pole will be flashed out of. T1 will keep both their carries alive here. On tried to predict the flash there from Faker. You saw the W in, and then On actually matched the flash. Unfortunately, he was a little bit short. Couldn't quite connect on to Faker, which means that Faker will get away with his life. But BLG feeling a lot more confident with their mid control. They're moving towards the Baron now. No way they're going to start this one off. It would be madness. Nope, okay. But maybe that is BLG. <laughs> yeah, that that prediction, though, that was so close to working. On was thinking, Faker's going to go right towards his tower, yeah. but Faker's angle on his flash, a little bit more down the corridor, not directly back towards it, so just on the outskirts. There's a reason he's the GOAT, man. Just those, those smallest things can make the biggest differences. True. An elusive goat. <laughs> Very difficult to pin the way down. The you Baker. said that is different from the way that he said it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but there was like an inflection thing. I don't know. <laughs> He's, uh, Kobe's implying there's some goat trying to hide around the barnyard. Right, in the yeah. Have you <laughs> seen the mountain goats up on those oh, tiny cliffs? Like, it is crazy. Oh, right, oh, no. oh, they're trying to catch owner this time, but instead it's on. And Gumiyoshi's unstoppable. They found Yagao. Shut down for Faker. Enemy mid, dead. Enemy engage, dead. Baron is the target for T1. T1's going to get that for sure. Unless Shun does a crazy miracle, but they're sending Zeus right for him. The two bouncers here, Karia and Zeus, going to make sure He's getting nowhere near that thing. He's not getting nope. an opportunity to even try. Oh, but they got it with the tongue lash. Oh. Elk has to flash over the wall. Elk with a potential massive outplay. And Zayas goes into the stasis, but he keeps himself alive. Gumiyoshi is dominating and Ben will not find the stun here with a counter strike. They got the Baron. They got back in the mid. They kept everybody alive. T1 have grabbed control of this game. Unbelievable. The early game was so dominant from BLG, but we talked about how they only need a single team fight. Owner finds the play. On things that he's called owner of God. The Gao and On, they think that they see an opportunity, but look at the minimap. The rest of BLG aren't anywhere near. Nice flash from Owner. The follow up from Carrier. The kill from Faker. Everything is so clean. And then you see here, Shun trying to get something back, but it's just not enough. Yeah, they try and push down mid, and then Elk here, looking for the big burst play with the Blade Clawler. He flashes it through, but Zeus has his Zonias. He's able to get over to Karia. Karia devours him. Faker as well with his Zonias. Or stopwatch. Not quite sure if he had finished it there. Just Whatever. the stopwatch it's is broken. A it's a It'll be thing. a Zonia soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here comes the soul. So much denial there from T1 and Guma on this Jinx that we were skeptical. And Champ Select, will he be able to stay safe? Yes, the resounding answer from all of T1 is yes. Faker with his crown shattered. Okay, owner with the engage, forcing the flash out of Yagao. Beautiful flag and drag right back out over the wall. Bin gonna be the target now as On looks to try to provide some disruption. Shun back over with a ball breaker, but he ain't gonna find a whole lot. Re-engage from Owner. Stopwatch to stop him in their tracks. Oh my goodness, it's T1! Just absolutely rolling over him. Do 
Double kill for Guma. Triple kill for Guma. Owner picks up another. Ben's the last man left alive, and he's going to walk home with a broken leg. T1 absolutely dominating. T1 barely walk away with a scratch. The damage is completely mitigated. Stopwatches, devour. Carrier didn't even use his devour in the fight. I he mean, Guma, Guma flash forward for a dead person to try and get a Quadra kill. It was crazy. <laughs> Just a one-sided fight from T1. We talked about how they've been ramping up throughout this tournament, and T1 are here to play. They're looking to secure a spot in the quarterfinals. And they're looking to do it in convincing fashion. This game is Guma gets excited, the visual novel. All right, <laughs> they start. They started out on Baker and just look for the first kill. It's it's a heavy target on Shun. He does have a stopwatch, but the zap hits before on goes for the engage. There's no DPS follow up, and once again, these supports have been walking loop pinatas, especially on on the Alistar, going down. Guma gets excited, the rest of them chase forward. The front line for T1. Oh, hang on, back in the action. Back in the action yet again. Shun trying to get away. Super Mega Death Rocket not gonna find the target, but Guma Yushi finds the kill on Elk instead, and they'll happily take that. Ben trying to disengage with a lead strike back to his jungler, but now he's gonna be thrown up in the air by Ogre yet again. Shut down over to Guma Yushi. T1 may have just won the game. Another convincing fight for T1. BLG just, they, they have no options in the fight. T1 are just consistently getting the better of them. Shun is forced to retreat. The TP now coming in from both Zayus and Faker. T1 are ready to end it here. The early game was tough. The top lane was rough. And for BLG, it was not enough. T1, the greatest team ever in League of Legends, is ready to bring it back and do it again. They're on the Nexus, and they're on their way to the quarterfinals. A bit of a revenge for MSI. T1 a will bit. take this series over BLG. Guma Yushi, incredible performance on the center. 11, 0, 3, and just listen to that crowd. This man, hey, he was the main character from Arcane in this <laughs> game. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, he was. The crowd fully in support of T1. And again, you can't talk about the AD carry without talking about the support. Carrier back-to-back time catch games. Wow, what a performance.